Welcome back everyone to Second Wind's second deck tech. Today I'm going to be walking you through one of the decks I just recently built, aka Angel's Tribal. This is a deck I've been waiting to build for a really long time now and I'm so glad I get to share it with you. For the commanders I chose Rograk, son of Roga. Partnering up with my main commander, Akroma, Visions of Ixidor. Akroma is the real commander of this deck. For 5 and 2 white, you get Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, and Trample. And, at the beginning of each combat, until end of turn, each other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 if it has Flying, plus 1 plus 1 if it has First Strike, and so on for Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Protection, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and Partner. The whole point of this deck is to get as many angels out as possible, give them as many keywords as possible, and buff them up each combat with a chroma. Now that the commanders are out of the way, let's move on to the first set of creatures. Kicking off the list of creatures, we have Enduring Angel. For 2 and 3 white, you get an angel with flying and double strike. You have Hexproof. If your life total would be reduced to 0 or less, instead transform Enduring Angel and your life total becomes 3. Then, if Enduring Angel didn't transform this way, you lose the game. Next up, we have Segovian Angel. For 1 white, you get an angel with flying and vigilance. Herald of War is up next. For 3 and 2 white, you get an angel with flying, and whenever Herald of War attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Angel spells and human spells you cast cost 1 less to cast for each plus 1 plus 1 counter on Herald of War. Last up, we have Gideon, Font of Hope. For 1 and a white, you get a legendary creature angel with flying and vigilance. Each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each angel you already control. Tap, add 1 white, spend this mana only to cast an angel spell. Next up on the list, we have Safara Skyblade. For 4 and 3 white, you get a legendary creature angel with You May Pay White and tap 4 untapped creatures you control with flying rather than to pay the spell's mana cost, flying and lifelink. Other creatures you control with flying also have indestructible. Yet another way to add another keyword onto all of your angels. Raya Dawnbringer is an angel for 6 and 3 white with flying, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Next up is Amira Shepherd. For 5 and 2 white, you get an angel with flying, and whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, you may return target non-land permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If that land is a plains, you may return that non-land permanent to the battlefield instead. Second to last for this group is Sarah's Emissary. For 4 and 3 white, you get an angel with flying, and as Sarah's Emissary enters the battlefield, choose a card type. You and creatures you control have protection from the chosen card type. Resplendent Marshal is an angel warrior for 1 and 2 white with flying. When Resplendent Marshal enters the battlefield or dies, you may exile another creature card from your graveyard. When you do, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control other than the Resplendent Marshal that shares a creature type with the exiled card. Next up we have a Chroma Angel of Fury. For 5 and 3 red, you get an angel with this spell can't be countered. Flying Trample, protection from white and from blue. Pay 1 red, a Chroma Angel of Fury gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. More for 3 and 3 red. Sarah's Guardian is an angel that costs 4 and 2 white with flying, vigilance, and other creatures you control have vigilance. Shattered Angel is an angel for 3 and 2 white with flying, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may gain 3 life. Righteous Valkyrie is an angel that costs 2 and a white with flying, and whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. As long as you have at least 7 more life than your starting life total, creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2. Next group starts off with the Angel of Destiny, an angel cleric with flying and double strike. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player gain that much life. At the beginning of your end step, if you have at least 15 more life than your starting life total, each player of Angel of Destiny attack this turn loses the game. Sigarda's Vanguard gives each creature with different power double strike until end of turn. Speaker of the Heavens is a 1 cost 1-1 one, one human cleric that can net you a 4-4 four, four angel almost every turn. Akroma, Angel of Wrath, has Flying First Strike Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Protection from Black, and from Red. Another angel that's going to get beefed up by the commander. Angel of Vitality kicks off the next group. For two and a white, you get an angel that gets you one extra life every time you gain life. It also gets plus two plus two as long as you have 25 or more life. Thrive and Watcher gives all your other creatures plus one plus one and Vigilance. Valkyrie Harbinger nets you a 4-4 four, four angel creature token every time you gain four life before each end step. Playing Angel of Finality lets you exile an opponent's graveyard. Gisela Blade of Gold Knight doubles your damage and halves your opponent's damage, while Archetype of Aggression doubles your damage again. Aurelia Exemplar of Justice has, at the beginning of each combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. Until end of turn, that creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains trample if it's red, and gains vigilance if it's white. Angelic Skirmisher, each combat can give your creatures first strike, vigilance, or lifelink until end of turn. For the last four creatures, we have Bishop of Wings. You gain 4 life for every angel you control, and when an angel dies, you get a 1-1 white spirit creature token. 
Aurelia the War Leader gets you two combat phases. Baneslayer Angel has flying, first strike, lifelink, protection from demons and from dragons. After Breath Key for Seraph or another creature at Soul Bond 2 dies, you can return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of your next upkeep. I chose Elspeth and Gideon as the Planeswalkers simply to put other counters on creatures you control. Through both of them, you can choose to put Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible on any creature you control. Elspeth also has Create 5 three, three White Angel Creature Tokens with Flying. First up on our artifacts, we have Swiftfoot Boots to give Hexproof and Haste. Well of the Lost Dreams has whenever you gain life, you may pay X, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained. If you do, draw X cards. Quicksilver Amulet lets you cheat out one creature a turn for four. And Moon Silver Spear gives you creature first strike, and whenever a creature attacks, create a 4 4 white angel creature token with flying. Coat of Arms gives each creature plus one plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. Icon of Ancestry lets you draw creatures of the chosen type from the top of your library and gives them all plus one plus one. Whenever you cast a creature of the chosen type, Dora Destiny gets a charge counter on it. Creature you control of the chosen type gets plus one plus one for each charge counter on Dora Destinies. Whenever you cast a creature spell with Oketra's Monument, you get a 1-1 white warrior creature token with Vigilance, and white creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Last up on our artifact list, we have all of our mana rocks. Cage Sun not only doubles your mana, but gives creatures you control of the chosen color plus one plus one. Wayfarer's Bobble lets you search for a basic land card. Soul Ring lets you tap for two colorless. Boros Signet lets you pay one and tap, add red and white. And Arcane Signet taps for any color in the commander's identity. Moving away from artifacts, we will start off our enchantments with Sigarda Splendor. Whenever you cast a white spell, you gain one life, and on your upkeep, draw a card if your life total is greater than the last time you noted it. At the beginning of each end step, Angelic Accord could potentially net you a 4-4 white angel. When a creature enters the battlefield with Angelic Chorus, you gain life equal to its toughness. Dictate of the Twin Gods gives you double damage, and True Conviction gives you double strike and lifelink. Furnace of Wrath doubles your damage, and Ghostly Prison makes opponents pay two for each creature attacking you. Kicking off our sorceries, we have our board wipes, starting off with Mass Calcify. Destroy all non-white creatures. Wrath of God, destroy all creatures, they can't be regenerated. Vanquish the Horde could potentially be a two-cost board wipe, with this spell costs one less cast for each creature on the battlefield, destroy all creatures. Acroma's Vengeance destroys all creatures, artifacts, and enchantments. Hour of Revelation could end up being a three-cost board wipe. Destroy all non-land permanents. Next on our sorcery list, we have Imperial Storm and Starnheim Unleashed. These sorceries are simply here to summon you an army of 4-4 angels. Our instants are going to start off with our removal cards, beginning with Return to Dust. Exile target artifact or enchantment. If you cast a spell during your main phase, you may exile up to one other target artifact or enchantment. Heliod's Intervention either destroys X target artifacts or enchantments, or gains you twice X life. Swords to Plowshare exiles a target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. Make a Stand gets creatures you control plus one plus zero and indestructible until end of turn. If you cast Unbreakable Formation during your main phase, not only do your creatures gain indestructible, they also get plus one plus one and vigilance until end of turn. Angel's Grace is a split second instant that doesn't let you lose the game, doesn't let your opponents win the game, and doesn't let your life total be reduced to less than one. Starting off our lands, we have our fetch lands with Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, and Myriad Landscape. While Exotic Orchard, Path of Ancestry, Opal Palace, and Command Tower can all tap for one color in your commander's color identity. Because your commander's an angel, whenever you cast a creature spell with Path of Ancestry, you can scry one. And if you use Opal Palace to cast your commander, your commander gets a plus one plus one counter for each time it was cast from the command zone. Next up, we have our basic lands and our multicolored lands. This deck will consist of eight plains and ten mountains. And Boros Garrison's Battlefield Forge and Needle Spire's main use is for land choice. Last but certainly not least, we have our effect lands. Reliquary Tower gives you no maximum hand size, while Rogue's Passage makes a creature unblockable. Slayer's Stronghold or Sunhome Fortress of the Legion gives target creature Vigilance and Haste or Double Strike until end of turn. And Axe Guard Armory lets you search your library for an aura and equipment card and put them into your hand. Building this deck will price you in around $181. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Second Wind EDH.